What is up? What is up? What is up, friends? We're doing it again, doing it again, doing it again. Coming back at you with the Daily Dose. Daily Dose day number 160 today, 160, day 160. We are still continuing through the book of Proverbs. We've got chapters 23, uh, excuse me, 22, 23, and 24 on the menu for today along with Psalm number 5. So let's take a look at some of these Proverbs in... uh, in chapter 22, and let's see what we got. So starting off with 22, verse 1, it says, A good name is more desirable than great riches. Mm. There's a lot to be said in that, right? Um, if you make a good name for yourself, if you work hard and you develop a good reputation, right, that will just open the door for you in the future for people to want to hire you, if we're talking about work, to entrust you with more responsibilities, if we're talking about some sort of... um leadership position it's it's just a good thing having a good name you know if you've got a whole lot of money but you've got a bad reputation and people think really lowly of you you know that's no fun and then when your money runs out and you've made a bad name for yourself who's going to hire you to do a job right so a good name is definitely more desirable than great riches i think that's a good point to be esteemed is better than silver or gold again how people think of you if people when i think of esteem i think of you know like self esteem how do I view myself? Um, how lowly or highly do I think of myself, right? And so this, it, it seems to be talking about, you know, do people think highly of you? If they do, it's better to have that than it is to have a little bit of silver or gold, right? Moving on to the next verse, rich and poor have this in common. The Lord is the maker of them all. That's the ultimate leveler, right? That levels the playing field. Don't matter if you're rich or if you're poor. Don't matter if you're black or or white, or purple, or pink. It don't matter if you are a man or a woman. It doesn't matter. Any n- Nothing matters because the Lord is the maker of everybody, right? Ultimately, the rich and the poor, whatever, God still made you. God is still in charge, right? Moving on to the next verse, it says, the prudent see danger and take refuge, right? So people who are prudent and people who are wise... They see danger, and they take refuge. They act on it, right? This is speaking of somebody who is um, who notices things, somebody who is perceptive, somebody who is looking around and being mindful of their surroundings. And when they notice some danger, what do they do? They take refuge, right? And then in contrast to that, it says, but the simple keep going and pay the penalty. So people who are simple, and I think that that speaks of being like more simple in mind, people who think more simply, people who don't pay attention, people who aren't as wise, people who are maybe a little bit more hasty and foolish, right? People who are simple, they don't pay attention when they see danger. They just keep on going. And guess what? They play with fire, they're going to get burned. I think there's definitely truth to that. Humility is the fear of the Lord. Its wages are riches and honor and life. Here we go again. Fear of the Lord. It's talking about humility this time. It says humility, being humble. What does that look like? It looks like the fear of the Lord. It's produced from the fear of the Lord. And what are its wages? Riches, honor, and life. Okay? In the paths of the wicked are snares and pitfalls. But those who would preserve their life stay far from them. Okay, I think there's definitely truth to that, right? You know people who just seem to continually make bad decisions, and not just make bad decisions here. Here it's talking about people that are wicked, people who plot evil, people who are not followers of righteousness or followers of Jesus, people who are followers of their own selfish desires, people who are followers of their own sin, people who are wicked and try to um, take what they want at the expense of others potentially, right? That's what I think about when I read this verse, and it's talking about the path of the wicked, right? So in the path of people like that, there are snares and pitfalls. There are traps that these people are going to fall into. They're going to reap what they sow. They're going to get in trouble, right? <clears throat> so in, in converse to that, uh, it's saying those who would want to preserve their life needs to stay far away from these wicked people, right? Not just because if you spend time with wicked people, chances are they're um, low Ethics and morals will probably persuade you and rub off on you, not to mention that. But 
if you hang around with people that are doing no good, that are up to no good, you're probably going to get caught up when they get caught up and get in trouble too, right? Start children off on the way they should go. And even when they are old, they will not turn from it. I think there's some good truth to that for parents in particular, right? Um, I think that parents, it's my opinion, I think it's it's good for parents to to be there, to be present for their children, um, to help walk through life with their children, especially beginning at a young age, not just when the children are older. And I think that if you do set up a routine, um, if you do set up and show an example of what it looks like to be a Christian, if your child does see you spending daily time in the Word of God, if your child does see that God is important to you, if you do these things to start and set your child on the right path, there's a pretty good chance that your child's going to stay on that path. doesn't always work that way, uh, but I think that there is definitely a much better chance. The rich rule over the poor, and the borrower is slave to the lender. Whoever sows injustice reaps calamity, and the rod they wield in fury will be broken. Wow. So this is talking about somebody who sows, somebody who plants, somebody who is all about injustice, right? Um, <clears throat> when they sow injustice, they're going to reap what they sowed. They're going to reap from that. They're going to reap calamity, right? And it says the rod that they wield. So we're, we're seeing somebody here who is, is wielding a rod, right? Presumably something that they're using to... Um, so a representation of their power, right? A rod. A king would hold a rod. A ruler would hold a rod. It was kind of a, a, a an item or it brings up an image of, of power, right? Um, it's saying that the rod that they wield in fury, it will be broken. So they're just going to get themselves into all kinds of trouble as a general rule. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then it says, the generous will themselves be blessed for they share their food with the poor, Right? And it, isn't it funny how that works? I think about Christmas time and how, as a kid, I love getting presents. Um, but there came a point where I don't really care so much about getting presents. I like to give presents. And I like to see the expression on someone's face when they open the gift. It's more, more joyful for me to give a gift to someone, oftentimes, than it is for me to receive a gift, right? And I think this speaks to that, too. It's saying the generous will be blessed because they're going to, be sharing their food with the poor. They're going to be sharing clothes with the naked. They're going to be sharing drinks with the thirsty. They're going to be sharing Bibles with people that can't afford Bibles. And <clears throat> and in that, they will be blessed, right? It may be talking about that God is going to bless people for being generous with their stuff. I think that that is a, a biblical principle to a certain extent. But I think it's also saying that a person will be blessed in their spirit, because of the fact that they're being generous, right? Let's see here. That was about all I had. Let's see. I had one more thing here. I'm just trying to find it. I'm sorry. Bear with me. One of the next sections, it's um, titled in my Bible, 30 Sayings of the Wise. And one of those sayings says, Do you see someone skilled in their work? They will serve before kings. They will not serve before officials of low rank. Right? So when I think about this, I think about someone who takes pride in their work. Somebody who does the research and, <clears throat> and puts in the practice and puts in the effort to become good at a job or a trade or a skill set. Right? Someone who really tries hard to be good at what they do, right? Someone skilled in their work, whatever that work may be, right? So this is saying that that type of person, the type of person who puts in time and real effort and really manages to come up with a solid um, product, right? Whatever that product, so to speak, is not necessarily a physical product, but just someone who puts in effort and produces quality work. Someone like that is not going to end up working for officials of low rank. In other words, you're not going to have some menial, dead-end job making minimum wage. You might have to start out that way, 
right? But if you continue to put in good work, regardless of what you're being paid, and you do your job as unto the Lord, more times than not, you're going to get promoted. And your boss is going to see that. And then your next boss is going to see that. And you're going to get promoted. Um, by the grace of God, that's how I have gotten to what I'm doing today for a living. Uh, I took a few jobs in the restaurant business when I was younger. And then when I was in my late teens, early 20s, I guess, I started working at a local cable company. And I was a customer service representative. Okay, So I started out in a call center. I was taking telephone calls. Um, I was making better than minimum wage, but it wasn't a whole lot. I did get paid some commission, you know, based on sales and things like that. <clears throat> um, but over time, my supervisors, my managers saw that I did a good job, so they promoted me, right? They promoted me up to a lead representative, right? Um, I ended up getting laid off from that job because the call center closed down when we went to a regional call center. So my position got kind of eliminated. <clears throat> but I ended up going to work somewhere else at careerbuilder.com. Um, I started out there doing customer service, but they saw that I did good work. I got promoted, right? Um, eventually, I ended up coming back to the cable company doing work in the dispatch department. So while I was in the dispatch department, um, I decided I want to try my hand at things of a more technical nature. I actually had to take a pay cut, a substantial pay cut, to go from a dispatcher to being an installer technician, but I did it. And, um, and sure enough, once I started doing the installation work, um, my bosses saw the quality of my work and that I cared about what I did and I got promoted from doing, from doing installs. I got to do, um, service calls and troubleshooting calls. And then I got to deal with, um, commercial applications in businesses. Right. And from there, I went to um, be a maintenance system technician, one of the bucket truck guys, right? And, and so even the job I'm doing now, it's, it's not with the cable company. Um, I do telecommunications construction, and I started off there as a maintenance technician in a bucket truck, but they saw my, my work ethic, and they offered me a position doing um, project coordinating, like project management, basically for, um, for residential um, single dwelling units, multi dwelling units, high rises, whatever, for um, for building the cable construction piece of that. So, my point is that, and I don't take credit for any of that. Um, the only reason that I'm able to excel in my work life is because of the work ethic God has given me, right? And because of the abilities that God has given me. And and I'm not saying any of this to brag at all. I'm just saying I'm, I'm using this as a real life illustrative example. Of, of this verse, right? Do you see someone skilled in their work? They will serve before kings, not before officials low of rank. <clears throat> I see so many people that are posting right now how the minimum wage is too low. It's not a livable wage, right? And I will grant that the minimum wage is low and that you're going to have a really hard time surviving on that minimum wage, right? But some of these same people that are complaining about the minimum wage being too low, some of these people um, I have worked with in previous jobs at previous companies and I know their work ethic these are people who would come into work and not not all of them right I'm, I'm just talking about a, a few people right it, it, a lot of some of these people that that I'm thinking about they would come into work late consistently they would not show up for work they would do shoddy and lazy work when they were at work right they can't keep a job they can't keep a job and you know a lot of times you do have to start out making the low wages, but if you do your due diligence and you show up on time and you do what you're supposed to do and you try harder than everybody else, your employer will notice that and you will get promoted nine times out of ten, right? So um, anyways, I won't go off on, on any more of a rant about people who can't even show up on time complaining that the minimum wage is too low, but... Anyways, that's all I got for y'all. Thank you for being here. Thank you for um, letting me ramble on here a little bit. And I know I ran over my 10-minute my mark I like to aim for. But, hey, thanks for being here. Appreciate y'all. Love y'all. And to God be the glory. Till we meet again, deuces.